Okay, well, you may be asking yourself, what is he doing now? Well, I was just drilling some uh, pilot holes there. If you remember, these are the um, well, these are the frame strengtheners and also the four link brackets for uh, the crawler here. We welded these up in a previous video. And if you'll remember in that video, I told you that I was gonna weld some nuts into the back side of that so that uh, later on, I'll be able to attach a belly skid or an engine skid to this thing without having to weld to it or anything like that. Whoop. So, what I was doing there, while this was attached, or while it was underneath there where it's supposed to be, I drilled some holes, and the reason I did that under there was so that I could match those holes to the actual uh, frame under there. So now I need to drill those out to a larger size, and then I'm going to weld these on the back, and that way uh, I'll be able to use these bolts. I've got some big heavy-duty bolts here, and uh, that will hold my cross member on. Um, that's the plan anyway. So let's get over and start drilling these holes out larger. Oh, one more thing. If you look right here, I've marked, uh, this is the low spot in the transfer case. This is the end of the transfer case. This is uh, the double carbon rear drive shaft. And this is the uh, tranny mount. And this is the middle of the transmission right here. Now you have to remember when we go to attach these skids on there that these are the um, these are the lower arms right here. So I have I can't attach anything in front of the upper arms, but I can attach something right here in front of the lower arms as long as um, it doesn't hit. But it's not going to hit because the lower arms can't up travel any further than the uh, the frame because otherwise they would hit the frame so uh, we're good I'm good to put a hole up front just a little ways here I don't want to go out too far actually I don't even need to but um, just want to make sure that you don't attach a skid plate in an area that's going to get hit by the the links obviously so let's get this centered up I've got a step bit here. I've never had one of these before. I bought this recently. I really like it. So, um, what we need to do is open it up large enough just to get this bolt through. gonna do it this uh, I need to flip it over actually because this uh, bit is starting to open it up one more because the metal is thicker than the little steps in the bit there and now I gotta make sure I don't cut through my table so let's put some wood under there <laughs> That's all it needed, I believe. Let's check it. Yep. All right. Now before I weld these nuts on, I wanna make sure that they're centered. So to do that, I'm just gonna put a bolt through there, tighten them down until I get something like this. Then I'm just gonna tack the uh, edge. I'll take the bolt out of there before I actually weld it because I don't want it to get seized up in there.
Well, it's the next day. These things are all cooled off. If I'm lucky, I didn't get any splatter around the uh, threads on the inside, and these will just screw right in. So they do. Now the next thing I need to do is open up the uh, frame, the bottom of the frame on the Cherokee side to accommodate those large uh, nuts going up inside there. Um, so I can either use this uh, step bit, I'm debating whether I should use that, or if I should just uh, cut a square hole in the bottom. It's one thing to use this uh, a drill bit in a drill press, it's another thing when you're trying to hand hold it doesn't quite work out so well. But uh, I do need to accommodate for my weld too. I didn't quite think of that so that'll have to be fairly large holes for those to go up into. But it's not going to um, mess with the structural rigidity of the frame since this will be basically my new frame right here. Well, that drill bit works good, but when one of those pieces of hot steel hits you in the neck, that freaking hurts. Okay. There was one last thing I was thinking about when I was under there, and that is drainage. We know there's a lot of holes in the Cherokee frame, so when you go in deep water, the frame's going to fill up with water, but at the bottom of this channel, there's no place for that to escape once we weld up all the edges, all that water will just be stuck in there. So, I've marked some places here where I want to drill some holes, some weep holes, and those line up with the weep holes that are in the frame. check that out. I've got four holes for bolting, three holes for weeping, two brackets for bracketing, and a partridge and a pear tree. Okay well this bracket is almost ready to tack into place but before I do there's a couple small things I want to do. Number one, I want to lay these side by side and I want to mark all the holes so that the holes will be mirror images of each other. I'll use a square to do that. And uh, number two, what I want to do, once I tack this up there, it's still going to be raw steel on the inside. So what I want to do is try to paint it on the inside as best as I can. Now some of that's going to melt off whenever I weld it together, but uh, there's not much you can do about that. So I'm just going to give it a coat of paint on the inside. And those holes were two inches from this outside lip, so I'll do that over here and make a little X. That'll be where I start the hole. I'll use the red for the nut and then I'll use different color for these uh, weep holes. Those weep holes, I had those more in the center. Let's measure over here. Yeah, they're about two and an eight from the edge. So 
Eh. Those don't really matter so much. Okay guys, I need to put the camera down and do some serious work, but thank you for watching. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe. Check out our store at bleepinjeep.com. And uh, that's it. Maybe next time I'll have these suckers in there and uh, you can see what else we're going to do to this uh, scorpion crawler project. Leave your comments below. We'll see you next time.